Good afternoon, Commissioner. We're delighted uh, to welcome you. We've just introduced you and are very delighted to have you. Uh, she'll be speaking for a number of minutes and we might have one question or two to follow up. Lovely to see you even remotely, Dunya. Yeah, very nice. Lovely, lovely to see you. Very, very, very nice to, to be uh, with all of you, even though I would prefer to be there in person. Regardless, I think it's very important that we are meeting. Uh, Go ahead, Commissioner. You, we, we, know, we know okay, that you had, a number, you had you. a number of things to, to, to share with us and your views. We'd be delighted to hear them. So, first of all, um, you know, it's really wonderful uh, to come back um, and to have the opportunity to engage with uh, Edri. Um, I'm, I'm thanking you for um, your dedication, for your courage, for determination, for you know, so many issues in the past uh, years that are very much related uh, to, to our rights. Um, it is uh, important, uh, you know, to participate and to have discussions with such uh, amazing uh, colleagues and, and speakers. Uh, but I would also like to use the opportunity to congratulate uh, the team um, for their professionalism and long-standing commitment to safe in digital space. I had the opportunity um, to uh, witness this uh, myself on many uh, occasions and at many crossroads we had uh, in the past. Uh, and I'm not saying this uh, only out of, of, of courtesy. So um, this increasingly is not you know, really easy and we already heard uh, some thoughts. Um, and it is given the profound technical and legal expertise that is required, but also the high level of uh, resistance uh, which digital rights defenders sometimes meet from policymakers and legislators and from the powerful, powerful industry that is behind technological progress. So we live um, in the age of surveillance. That's nothing new um, and nothing shocking uh, for most of us uh, engaging uh, uh, in this discussion. Um, even our most private uh, moments can uh, end up in a public eye as uh, human rights uh, defenders, uh, activists, uh, journalists and bloggers have painfully experienced um, and as in fact anyone may painfully experience, just an ordinary citizen. So why is encryption important? Once again, we need to ask the same question. Um, I'm not a tech expert. Um, somehow I think I became one, uh, but I understood quickly um, that encryption is a vital uh, human rights tool. Um, effective end-to-end -end encryption is um, indispensable if we want to protect uh, the security of communications uh, for everyone on a network. And we need encryption to ensure that no one including uh, the platform provider can read or alter our messages and to preserve the confidentiality between the sender and the recipient. Encryption is therefore indispensable for the effective protection of the right to privacy, freedom of expression, and many other human rights. In fact, the security of communications often also means the security of, of persons, of individuals, of, of human beings. I work closely with uh, human rights uh, defenders across Council of Europe uh, member states, and I know uh, that encryption um, is essential for their safety and the safety of their families, um, their friends, their colleagues, and networks and their beneficiaries, namely the victims of human rights violations themselves. So I think this is important to understand that it's not just tech, it's not technical. It is really going deeply into the people's uh, rights. Journalists also uh, rely uh, on effective end-to-end -end encryption to protect their confidentiality and the confidentiality of their sources and to perform their job, which is vital for democratic societies. So the struggle over online encryption is almost as old as the internet itself. Ten years ago, um, my office published, um, we call it an issue paper, uh, on the rule of law on the internet, 
pointing to the dangers on the growing technological capabilities of electronic mass surveillance and the possibility to build flows and backdoors into security systems to weaken encryption. If anything, the struggle over encryption has become harder and more existential since then, and this was 10 years ago. And public debate is dominated by narratives of national security, as you know, and terror, um, protect uh, the security of our societies, and, and many other issues that are very much uh, intertwined and interrelated. And while Council of Europe member states have a duty to protect um, the security of our societies, they also, at the same time, have the obligation to safeguard individual rights in line with the European Convention of Human Rights. So it's not either or. I mean, this is really important uh, in order to understand the gravity of the problem we are discussing here. Privacy is a fundamental human right and absolutely essential if we wish to live in dignity and security. If it cannot um, be uh, fortified easily, and states and private companies, unlike, um, must therefore be very cautious in using our data uh, and avoid any abuse if we still want to continue saying that we are living in a democratic state. Any interference with our right to privacy must be subject to strict legal rules and close democratic oversight. And this includes, of course, the application of um, automated tools that have the power to monitor private communications. While such tools can help us fight grave crimes, and we have to recognize this, including the very pervasive threat uh, of online child abuse, we need a high level of transparency and accountability around the use of such scanning technologies uh, to ensure that it is human rights compliant, first of all, and it meets high safety necessity, but also proportionality standards. It's not easy, but, but it is must. There must be no general and indiscriminate access to the content of personal communications, um, neither by state authorities or companies. This would undermine the very essence uh, of digital security in terms of privacy uh, protection and human rights safeguards. And to conclude, fighting for the right to privacy, protecting encryption is a vital, as a vital tool to ensure the security of communications and promoting transparency and the rule of law standards in the digital environment is a hard and long struggle that is fought at the front line by civil society organizations uh, like EDRI, and I want to thank you again for your efforts, for your courage. The whole human rights community relies on actors like yourself. And again, congratulations for organizing this important event. And I wish you a very productive discussion. And you can, as you know, always count on, count on me as your allocating our rights. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Commissioner. I think also um, to, to hear that policy reiterated from such an authoritative source as, as the Commissioner for Human Rights is, is really reassuring to a lot of the advocates on the ground here in Brussels. And speaking of Brussels, Commissioner, I wonder if I might uh, just ask, as you were speaking there and talking about, for example, ac indiscriminate access to messaging, the importance of encryption, I'm sure uh, it's come to your attention that the European Union is currently discussing uh, the child sexual abuse material regulation. And I just wondered if you and your role as Commissioner ha had a particular view or thoughts on that regulation and, and the direction the EU might want to take. Well, I mean, of course, that I'm following uh, not only what the EU um, is, is planning to do, but in general, you know, member states uh, of the Council of Europe and beyond, because those are the issues that are really um, precious uh, to, to, to all of uh, us, um, you know, the rights, but also protection. And as Commissioner uh, for Human Rights, I, I must say that I'm appalled by the pervasiveness uh, of the threat of uh, child abuse online. Um, and I wholeheartedly support effective um, action um, uh, against all forms of such abuse. This is important uh, to, to note. But this 
um, in my view, must include not only efforts to um, detect uh, and also delete child abuse uh, material, but also to find uh, the children, rescue them uh, from the abusive environment and bring perpetrators uh, to justice. So it's not just about you know, blocking, it's much more than that. And as far as the ongoing negotiations um, on, uh, on an EU regulation are concerned, I can only um, agree with the Council of Europe Independent Expert uh, report of 2021 that is also available online, which was commissioned by um, the Lanzarote Committee, uh, that effective safeguards must be put in place to ensure that a proper balance, uh, and we are again talking about this, um, you know, very, uh, in a way, uh, used word of, of, of balance, but at the same time, very important, so this balance um, is found between the, the right to privacy, including that of children, and child protection concerns. So any proposed detection uh, technology for, for child sexual abuse material must be applied in strict conditions of transparency and accountability and must meet high safety, necessity and proportionality standards. Otherwise, we are not moving in, in, in the right direction. Thank you so much, Commissioner. I think that's that's very clear, and, and I think everybody in the room really agrees as well. I mean, arguably, nothing is as important as protecting uh, the rights of the child and the best interests of the child. And at the same time, of course, we know that privacy is of utmost importance to the most vulnerable children, and that's why we make that connection, of course, with the indiscriminate um, proposals of, of scanning communications. Uh, Commissioner, thank you so much for your time. We're deeply grateful for it. And we do hope to see you again in person soon. Thank you so much for your time.